All right. I feel like I'm a mile from you over here. I know. Well, hey, I'm going to um, introduce a few people, including myself. I know several of you, but I don't know all of you, and uh, would love to, if I haven't met you, meet you after uh, our gathering. But my, my name is Cody. I am the lead pastor of Hope City in Joplin, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what that looks like because it's been a while since we've shared that. But there's some folks that are with me today. Uh, one, my wife is back uh, with the kiddos. And so her name's Rachel. I'm, I'm sure she would wave if she could, but she is loving on, on those little kids. And then up here in front, uh, Shane, will you wave? Shane is, oversees our worship up in Joplin. Logan, if you'll wave, uh, he oversees all our family ministry up there. Um, Barrett back here uh, by the IMAX sign. Barrett is one of our elders. And um, then uh, th there's a few other people that I want you to know. Uh, we, we've been chatting through this with as well. Uh, Kevin, who's walking across the back, wave Kevin. Kevin. Uh, yeah, there's Kevin. Jason's over here. Scott's right here. Wave Scott. So these are guys that we've all been sitting around the table chatting with and really talking about several things that we're going to talk about this morning. And so uh, I'll, I'll share a little bit about myself in a second, but I kind of want to, before we get into any of that, um, hear a little bit from Adam on the church and family stuff. So we're just going to spend a few minutes talking about you and well, not just you, but, but the church as well. And I, I told him, I said, I just want to start by kind of getting a, a recap. He and I have had this conversation, but just to get us all on the same page, a recap of kind of what life's looked like for Hope City over the past I don't know, three months since, yeah. since we moved. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, man, you, you all know, like, we, we made this shift back in the summer, and uh, it's been challenging uh, in some ways, hasn't it? I mean, the, the theater moved from the after-school program spaces, just a very, very different environment. So you guys have been so great to go with the flow and, like, figure out how do we meet in a movie theater with recliners, which was sweet from a nap perspective, <laughs> but not from a church perspective, you know? And so uh, I think when we moved out here to the lobby a couple weeks ago, it really uh, kind of helped the dynamic of community that we've come to know and love around here at Hope City. Um, I think on the other side of that, you're all's willingness and flexibility to lean into a uh, front sidewalk gathering last weekend was amazing. Last week was awesome, wasn't it? That was one of my favorite weekends we've had. And so the, the flexibility of every person that calls this church their church and the flexibility of all the volunteers and the work that you guys have been doing around here, I mean, it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. But, man, um, I barely heard anybody complain outside of Kevin. All right, I'll just be honest with you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm kidding, Kevin, wherever you are. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but, uh, man, it, it's been carrying a lot of weight. And so one of the things, you know, that we've talked through is, like, what are the next steps for Hope City? How do, how do we continue to grow and thrive and become the church that God intends us to be here in Northwest Arkansas? Uh, in the middle of that, uh, the, the, the weight and the load of both ministry, church, and then you guys know for us as a family, like we've gone through some pretty significant stuff in the last three or four months with Ashley having a couple surgeries. And uh, Cody and I just started talking and we were like, man, we need to figure out how to work better together, partner together within Hope City and Joplin and Hope City here in Northwest Arkansas to help this thing thrive for a long, long time. Yeah, would you maybe share uh, as, as much or as little as you want, but just if we could get a sneak peek, because Adam's not a complainer. He, he will, he, he's, you know, I, I love this about him. The dude is such a hard worker, but I'm giving you permission for a moment, just because yeah. we've had this conversation to yep. share about, man, home, family stuff. What are things looking like for you guys? Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, I, I shared this uh, kind of briefly over a, a couple messages within the last month, but, you know, Ashley and I have really had a lot of difficult but good conversations that, like, the energy and attention that the church has needed, or I felt like that it's needed, maybe I'll put it that way, um, has been taking me away from the people that, like, matter the most to me, and Ashley and our kids, and they've not been getting the time and energy and attention that they needed in that. Uh, you know, alongside of that, the last four years of church planting, some of you guys didn't know what you were signing up for when you came into this, but man, it's just been a grind, hasn't it, in, in some ways, and, uh, you know, we're praying and trusting that God's going to do what, what only he can do to, to build his church, because Jesus promises he's the one that builds the church, and I think part of my... Um, Tiredness is I get that mixed up. Like, I think sometimes I'm responsible for building the church when Jesus goes, no, nah, I'm going to do it. I just need you to show up and be faithful with it. But 
Um, between that and then Ashley's surgeries, I think, you know, when I sat down with Cody about a month ago, I just said, man, I'm, I'm tapped in all areas of life. Like, I don't have a lot of energy to offer to the church. Ashley is not getting the best version of me in, you know, she hasn't gotten it in a long time. And then our kids are just kind of getting like, let's just not let them burn the house down type of energy. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, I, honestly, Cody, like, man, I'm tired. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out how to better navigate that so that yeah. the ministry gets what it needs, but my family gets the best version of me. Yeah. And what I told Adam is this the way, this is the way a church should work. Uh, not every church works like this, but this is the way Hope City does it is we're gonna do what's best for Hope City and we're gonna do what's best for Adam, not either or. Adam and Ashley, uh, they need to be taken care of and the church needs to be taken care of. So it's not, hey, how do we do what's best for the church? And man, good luck, Adam and Ashley. I hope you guys, you know, hey, hang in there. Or, hey, we need to just take care of Adam and Ashley while the church suffers. We believe we can do both. I, I love these guys because they're not victims. They've never uh, said, man, poor us. At the same time, part of our conversation was I looked at Adam and I said, hey, can I tell you what you're telling me? And he's like, yeah. And I said, you're tired. And he said, I'm tired. And that's hard to say as a leader because he knows people are depending on him. He knows that uh, uh, the church needs a leader. He knows these things. And so that's what promoted this, this conversation today. So here's what we're going to do. And this is what I'd love to do before we do anything else is I want to, as a church, pray over the berries and just be a blessing to them this morning. And then what I'm going to do after we pray over them is Adam's going to sit by his wife and he's going to attend church a little bit this morning, which is going to be really Thank weird. You. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to share a little bit of a message uh, because it's going to be it's going to be condensed. But I'm going to share uh, two things at the end of this message. So that means you got to stick in here, okay? There's two things at the end of this message that I think are going to be uh, really exciting to help us move forward. And while we do this, I'm just going to remind. I know Adam said this, but if your kids need to run around or if they're getting squirmy, they do not worry about it. Like that's th this is what we knew we were doing this morning when we brought kids in. Okay, so don't stress about that. Here's what I'm going to ask, uh, Kevin. Would you, Jason, and Scott come up here as we pray over? Uh, we're we're going to pray over the whole crew, but um, we're going to pray over Adam on behalf of their family. And so their, their crew's sitting right here, so they'll receive it. Uh, e e even as they run, they'll receive it. So. He's making me come up here, sorry. <laughs> All right, let, let's just pray. In fact, if, if you want to do this, this may seem weird, but it's okay because we can be weird. If, if you feel comfortable just kind of sticking a hand towards them as we pray, let's do that. God, thank you so much for this couple. I thank you for uh, just their heart for this church and for your kingdom. God, thank you uh, for their faithfulness and just, um, man, hearing that they're tired and they've been through a lot. We, we see it, we feel it, and we just want them to know that, um, Father, that, that we're in their corner. Lord, that not only uh, do you have exactly what they need, uh, Father, but you care deeply for them. And so I just, in their faithfulness and their uh, work and their effort to, to serve you and the kingdom, God, would you just allow them to breathe? Just literally just catch their breath, Father. Would you help Ashley recover? Uh, God, she's in the midst of it, and you know that, but would you just be with her? Would it be a, a recovery that would be speedy and, uh, and good? Father, give the doctors continued uh, wisdom as they care over her. God, would you give Adam uh, some bandwidth so that he can take care of his kids and his wife right now while she recovers, Lord? Would you just allow his mind to even breathe a little bit? Uh, Father, I, I love them because this is very awkward for them to receive right now, but their humility and willingness is allowing them to do that. So would you just allow them to feel even now the church praying over them and blessing them uh, as they as they just breathe as they just catch their breath father we we believe that you have everything they need and so we just pray that over them right now and it's in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you guys <laughs> you're good So, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of I'm going to give you a little bit of context um, as we as we shift gears here a little bit. Uh, so, Rachel and I we have known Adam and Ashley. How long have we known you guys? Gee whiz, 15 years, 15 years probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had the I had the blessing of uh, of 
watching these two date, and I told Adam that he needed to step up and ask her to marry him because he was dragging his feet. Yeah, Ashley was, she's forever grateful uh, to me for that. Um, so I just, I have a deep love for this couple, for their family. Um, you guys may not know this, you may know this, but uh, Adam's sister, uh, her husband, Charlie, is on our staff in Joplin. So uh, Rick and Letitia, uh, Adam's parents run back and forth between churches and we keep them busy working. And, and so uh, we've just got a, a deep connection to the berries in this family. And so I told him, I said, hey, I wanted to come down and I wanted to lead through this because it's weird to lead through that for yourself, right? To get up and say, hey, I'm tired. Will you guys pray for me? That's just kind of, it's kind of a weird thing to do. You guys are tired. We know that. Uh, you guys uh, also need a way forward. So in all of this, what I want to do in context wise is I want to share a little bit um, of how we got to this point. So Hope City in Joplin was planted Ten and a half years ago, and Rachel and I, my wife, we we came, we planted that church, and uh, we we experienced so many of the same things that you guys experienced being portable. Uh, we met in a high school, we met in a sports complex. Uh, when we moved from location to the next location, um, some people came, some people didn't. That was super weird. When we built a building, some people came, some people didn't. And I'm like, why wouldn't you come? We finally have a building. You've been doing all this hard work. And so some of the transition stuff that you guys have experienced and going, man, we kind of moved to the Malco and there's been good things, but the after school you know, center had some things that we don't have here. Kids has been tough. Can I say that like out loud? We're okay saying that, right? It's been oh, yeah. tough. Like we, we were in a high school and our babies our, our parents, our, our mamas were having to take their babies up a flight of concrete stairs to get to the baby area. We called it the petting zoo because it just looked like little guardrails everywhere. And, and yeah, it was just, you just do what you have to do, right? That's how church planning works. And so we have, we have been on that journey. But the beautiful thing is we're far enough ahead of you guys to be able to look back and go, man, we think we might have some wisdom, not just some wisdom, but some ways that we can encourage and bless and help problem solve as we figure this thing out. So as we jump into this, uh, here, here's what I would tell you. I want to I share a passage out of 1 Peter 5. We've been in this Built Different series. Now, having said that, I don't know if Adam may have already shared this with you, but just being a part of a portable church, a, a new setup, y'all are built different. You just are. You're weird. Is that okay to say? Yeah. Like we're just weird. People who do this kind of thing, we're weird because we have vision and we believe that God could do something that we can't do on our own. We, we just, we believe that there's a need and we step into it and we don't know how it's all going to play out. We just believe that we're, we're built different. But I think the natural instinct when we face adversity, I think that, and, and even fear at times, I think the natural instinct is to run. If I could just tell you my own personal moment where I experienced this. So I grew up at my, uh, spending a lot of time at my grandma's house. And my grandma had, had this, I mean, every, she would never leave a light on in the house, right? Because she was from the era that you save. You do, you do not, I mean, I'm pretty sure she recycled ice cubes. We haven't proven that yet, but super disgusting. But we, but that was her mindset. And so uh, I remember being scared to death because the bathroom in the house was at the end of this long hallway. She had a long ranch style house and it was at the end of this long hallway and in order to get to that bathroom the light switch whatever crazy man designed the house put this light switch halfway down the hallway so you had to walk halfway down a dark hallway to get to the light switch to flip it on before you, you knew that you weren't going to die like that was so as a child like I had so many fears like I would get so close to that light switch I could I was envisioning like people jumping out of closets I mean okay I get kids right here so I gotta filter this but I was like I was like this is this is the scary scariest thing ever. I would finally hit the light switch and I, I would do anything I could to wait to have to go to the bathroom before I got home. Like, I don't even know if my grandma to this, I, 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 I don't think I ever told her this story to this day. So I, I don't know that she knows the fear that I had in this, right? And so so in that, my instinct, especially when you don't know if, if, if the enemy's there, if what's in the shadows, what's lurking, when you don't know any of that, your instinct is to run. It's to run. And I actually think that is the thing that we do typically, that, that not, not those who are built in Christ, because Jesus teaches us a different way to do it, but those who typically face adversity, face difficulty, the instinct is, all right, I, I'm, I'm done, I'm going to bolt. Now, y'all are built different, and here's why, because we, we face adversity every week. You guys were worshiping outside last week. You were locked out, and you're like, this is good. 
That's good. You know how weird that is? Like, there's so many people that would be like, this is dumb. And you guys are like, this is awesome. And you just made it work. Now, I don't know about awesome, but you're like, we'll, we'll make this work, right? And so that, that alone tells you something. I remember when I first went into ministry. When I first went into ministry, uh, man, it was, it was, I was in ministry, or it was, I think we'd been there a year and a half. I was a youth pastor. And on Christmas Eve morning at 5.30 a.m., the phone rang. And I was like, I mean, nothing good comes when the phone rings at 5.30 a.m., but let alone on Christmas Eve morning. You know how you just know uh, something's wrong. I didn't even know who was on the other end of the phone. I answer the phone, and the girl that was on the other end of the phone was uh, the wife of a couple that Rachel and I had met, had been connecting with the church. In fact, I had just baptized him two weeks earlier. And we had met them, and she tells me, she said, she's sobbing, she says, you have to come over, you have to come over, and I'm, I'm trying to make out what she's saying. Well, her brother, who had been living with them earlier that morning on Christmas Eve, uh, was, was killed in a fatal car accident. And she's, she doesn't even know what to say. She's hysterical. And so I just hang up the phone. I roll over. I say, Rach, we got to get dressed. We got to go. We got to go to the house. We got we to gotta go to Eric and Jen's. We got we to gotta head over that way. She goes, she's like, what's going on? I go, get dressed. I'll tell you on the way. And we get there. And I, guys, I didn't know how to do I mean, I... I was new to ministry. I was brand spanking new to ministry. And we're sitting there in their living room as they're just in shock, devastated, and, and bawling. And I left that morning, Christmas Eve morning, and I got in the car, and I thought, what in the world have I signed up for? Like, what, what am I doing? Like, what? I mean, I, I, have, I, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. If you've ever felt like I have, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing, even in following Jesus, if you're like, I, I don't... I don't know how this whole thing works. I'm telling you, like, in a lot of ways, that's ministry. I, I remember uh, sitting in our living room with a 17-year-old girl who we were trying to convince to stop doing drugs. We were begging her to stop doing drugs. I remember a, a kid in our youth group who I'd found out a year later after he, he was a part of our youth group. I remember getting the call that he had taken his life, and I thought, I don't even know how to process this, right? I remember as a pastor sitting with a couple who were, were at the hospital just learning as their child was born that, that their child was born with major birth defects and that it was going to alter their life forever. I remember that moment like it was yesterday, and I just I had no idea what to even say. What do you even do in that moment? And here's why I say, I think the heart in adversity, the natural response to the heart in adversity, especially when you, you feel fearful, I think it's to run. I, because running feels like you're getting away from it, somehow experiencing freedom. And that's, and I'm just telling you, that's what the world does. So when we talk about being built different, and we're talking about, so if you ever walk away and you're like, am I crazy for like, I'm going to church in a theater. And they're probably showing Saul, like right after this or whatever, you know, for, uh, they're not now. Maybe that's after Halloween. Maybe they've got rid of it. You know, you're like, this is weird, you know, like we, we, you guys have joked and had those conversations. And you're like, what, 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 what are we doing? Here's why. Because God's called us to something different. And maybe you're new to the faith and you're like, yeah, I don't even know for sure what he's called me to. Can I just tell you, that was me. Like I got into it and I, I realized real quick, I'm way over my head. Like I had no idea what God was going to do in our lives and, and the people that we were going to interact with and the things that, that we were going to be challenged with and navigating was going to be what they were. Here's what Paul says in Galatians, and, and this is what I'll share with you this morning as we jump into this. He says, it's for freedom. I think we've got it up here. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. This is what he says. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Paul's words to Christians is this. When things get hard, stand firm. And here's why. Because you don't want to go back to the life you had before. It was just a, it was a burden. I mean, some of you, some of you, y'all, the reason you're here right now is because you're like, man, I, I believe there's something better. And the way I was doing it, and maybe when we say the way I was doing it, the way I did it last night brings guilt and a weight in my life and a burden that I don't want to live with. Like I, there's got to be a different way to do life. And this is what Scripture teaches us, that there is. And the way that we're to live is we're to be a people who stand firm. Now, I want to, I want to read this because Scripture introduces this to us, not just, not just by Paul, but by Peter. So once, once you get to 1 Peter chapter 5, 
And, and, we, and we're talking about this idea of built different. This is what he says, and this is what we'll springboard into as we talk about what God's calling us to. He says this, be shepherds, and, and I've just highlighted again what it is that this looks like for us. Be shepherds of God's flock that's under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Not lording it over those entrusted you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Now, here, here's what Peter paints a picture of as we lead the church, okay? Peter paints a picture of these four things. The way you lead a church is out of willingness, not out of a burden. Not out of, not, and now listen to me, because some of you are like, well, man, sometimes I feel like it's a burden. Same. Like, that's convicting for me. Like, am I doing this because I'm compelled to do this, or do I feel like, oh, man, I, 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 got, I got this thing to do. You know what I mean? He says, out of a willingness, he says, with integrity, he says, with passion, and he says, do it by example. Now, Here's what happens, and there's an enemy that would love to sink this church. If you didn't know that, and you're new to the whole spiritual thing, and you're like, I'm trying to figure this out, let me just be really clear. There is an enemy, you have an enemy, and he would love to sink this place. He would love to, to, to literally wreak havoc on anybody who's God's, who God's doing a work in. So the way he'll do it is he'll do it through tempting you through dishonest gain, is what Peter says, through a lack of integrity. He'll do it by sucking or trying to suck away your passion. And he'll do it by jeopardizing your example and what you're modeling right now even for your kids, which I'll say whoever put together those packets, kudos, because it is crazy quiet right now. Uh, some of you uh, need like five stars on the Sunday school chart right now. So um, I don't know. That's the way it worked when I grew up. So, so out of willingness, not, not obligation or burden, with integrity, with, impa- with passion, and by example, that is how God calls us to do church. Are you with me? You can nod. You can be like, yeah. And if you don't agree, just make me feel better by being like, sure, whatever you say, man. So, okay, so here's what we have to do. We, we got to do this. Like, we got to do this. So as we were talking, one of the things that we've talked about is we're like, hey, y'all, uh, Adam, y'all need, you need a break. You need a breath. Why? Because there's a, there's a burden right now that he's carrying that's not sustainable. I'm just being honest. And he, you know, we've talked about that. And, and he's like, I, I just don't, I don't know that I can sustain this. I said, dude, we can have that conversation. With integrity, here's, this is what's important for you to know. We have a leadership that we don't talk a lot about. And the reason we have this leadership is for integrity. Uh, we, we don't talk a lot about it because... Um, it's not a, it's not a, a, a set up in a way in which there's folks that are sitting around a table pounding their fists. This, it's not that type of leadership. It's servant leadership. It's some folks, and I pointed out some of them earlier, uh, down here in, in Arkansas. You probably don't know this because these guys aren't sharing this uh, as though uh, they're humble guys. But Kevin, Jason, and Scott over this last year, they have sat in meetings as we've talked about this church and how God is moving in this church. And so they're speaking into some of those things. They're telling us, hey, uh, this is what we're experiencing. Certainly Adam has been in those meetings as well. In Joplin, we, so as a church plant, what we're doing is we're going, hey, there needs to be elders. That's the biblical model. There needs to be elders here. And the way God set up the church is that those elders would be overseers and they would protect things like this. They would help oversee the finances. They would help oversee all these things. It wouldn't be on one person. That wasn't the plan when, when Jesus created the church, right? And so Peter knew that because Jesus said to Peter, he said, I'm going to build my church through people like you. So th- this is the, where the integrity comes from. The passion, to be honest, comes from the vision. Like what has God called us to? And, and maybe you need to hear it from a fresh voice. But I think God has called us to be a church that makes it hard for people to go to hell in Northwest Arkansas. I think that's what he's called it. Called. I think he has called us to go after people who are broken and hurting and to say there's a better way. And those people, y- y'all, they're in your life, but they look completely different. I mean, some of them are, are living paycheck to paycheck. Some of them are living high on the hog, as they would say. Now, y- you name it. 
Some of them, uh, Jesus isn't even on their radar. You work with a lot of them. Some of them are your family. And these are folks that Jesus says, I've got a plan and a purpose for you. And that's our, our vision and our passion, to be a church for people who don't feel like they can go to church. You know why they don't feel like they can go to church? Because they've screwed their lives up, just like every one of us. Right? And we're like, yeah, that's us. Come join us and try to figure out what this looks like to walk with Jesus. And then by example is literally as we develop leadership and grow as disciples, as followers of Jesus, we begin to walk like Jesus. And as we walk like him, we're not perfect, but we begin to point other people to him. So this is how we do this. So having said that, this is what we believe that God's calling us to. In these conversations, uh, our, our elders in Joplin, the men that I mentioned, uh, we, we sat around the table a week ago. This, this info is as fresh as last week, if that helps you. And we said, listen, we, we got to figure out a plan. God's called us to this. God, we need you to reveal to us a way forward. And we believe there's two things that we can do to make sure that Hope City thrives in Northwest Arkansas. The first thing that we're gonna do, we have, this is how we've been functioning. We've been functioning as, a, as two churches with a shared vision. And that's a, that's, a, that's a good thing because we're able to talk to the staff down here a little bit and we're able to go, hey, um, what are you guys doing here? Oh, awesome, we might use that up here. And they've said, hey, what are you guys doing up there? And we're like, oh, that's great, we might use that down here. We've been able to share some resources, which has been awesome. One of the things that you may not know that we do is we actually share what's called central services. So our, uh, our um, everything from uh, payroll to accounts payable, all that stuff that it takes to rent a place and to, to keep a church going. Uh, we, we in Joplin, we are helping make all that happen so that burden's not here. So, oh, did we lose it? Oh, look at that. Oh, this, hey, just to, just to clarify, this TV is new, right? So we can blame it on the TV. Okay. Um, oh, oh. This is good. I'll continue this talk in two minutes and 55 seconds. Okay, so this is the way we've been doing this, the same vision with shared, what we would say, operations. So that's the way we've been functioning. And what we're going to do is we're going to move from this to a campus model, which means we're going to have the same leadership and we're going to begin to function as one church with two locations. So if you don't know about Hope City and Joplin, uh, man, we, we have, over the last couple years, we have kind of hit um, that 10-year mark, and we've gotten through a lot of the hurdles, not all of them, but a lot of the hurdles you guys are facing right now. So we believe that we can come along and infuse more energy and, and, and resources into this if we're one church meeting in two locations. And I'll, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Here's what we're not. Um, th there's also a model of church growth called... Well, I call it the franchise model, but it's it maybe similar to Life Church. It's none of these none of these models are bad or right or wrong. They all work in different contexts. But we're not talking about like the the same church in the sense of you're going to walk into an identical building as you walk into in Joplin or in Tulsa or wherever. We're not talking about that. There's still this church is still going to be this church in the sense of flavor. But we're talking about how do we partner in a way in which we are one church. So that's why our worship pastor is here this morning. That's why our family life pastor is here this morning, because we're coming down and we're going. That's why our wives are back there watching kids, right? Because we have been kind of like um, cousins hanging out, um, and we love each other. Um, but then we go back to our own lives, you know. And Joplin just, you know, Joplin's at a, different, a totally different stage in the life of the church up there than the church here. Uh, our, our, our Joplin location, we, we run about 26 to 2,800 people on the weekend. So we have kind of problems that are dumb. I mean, you know, when I say dumb, I'm like, we've racked our brain about how to fix parking cones, okay? To me, I'm like, this is dumb, you know? Like, can we just, I don't know, can we just not worry about parking cones? But that's not, that's not possible, because we have all these cars, right? We got all these people. So even when we're down here, this takes me back to like uh, our, our, our roots and our church planting days in Joplin, and I kind of smile. You know why? Because you all can know each other. We can't know each other. We keep saying, hey, we got to make a big church small because people don't want to be in a church where they're not known. So we have a whole different set of issues that we're, we're navigating up there, and we're trying to make sure that we're doing all this community stuff to get people to know each other. It's different here. And here's why it's different, because this right here, this is a family. Like it's a family. Now you're like, well, I don't know if I'm... <laughs> 
I don't know if I like everybody in my family. Well, that's just the way family works, all right? I, I have an aunt that I don't talk to because she's weird. So I, you know, so that's just the way family works, right? But that doesn't mean they're not family. You know what I'm saying? That, so so th this is family. So, and I'll, I'm here in a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up for questions and, and talk about what um, you guys want to talk about. But we're going to do this in a way in which we're going to take some of that load off of Adam. And so Adam's going to actually preach next week. And then I'm going to preach to Arkansas and Joplin the following week. So we're going to be sharing the same sermons. So we're going to be on track doing the same preaching, those, those types of things. I'll, I'll be down here when I'm not up there. We're adding to some staff up here so that or up, up in Joplin so that we can be here when we need to be here and be engaged. It's a little bit, it's a lot different, not a little bit. It's a lot different than the way we've been doing up to this point. I'm, up to this point, we've been kind of collaborating. Like, hey, let's talk about what you guys are doing. Maybe we'll do the same thing. At now we're going, hey, what this looks like is we are going to be one church. We're going to be one church that meets in Joplin and one church that meets right here in Northwest Arkansas. And who knows what God will do. There may be future campuses that we talk about, but here's the deal. Some of you may either have a connection to a church that did campuses or whatever. Here's all I'm telling you is we're going to do it the Hope City way. So if you're like, well, what's that look like? I'm like, well, we're Hope City. We're going to reach unchurched people. We're going to do it with excellence. We're going to be about it, right? But we're not going to do it in a way in which we're, we're, we're exhausted every weekend. We can't because we just can't sustain that. In case you're wondering, when we hit three and a half years in Joplin, we, uh, we plateaued. We went flat. Numbers didn't grow. Uh, folks were getting tired. And here's why, because we just couldn't sustain the setup and teardown model. We couldn't do it. And we, we, so we then ended up moving into a permanent facility. And when people knew, when our folks knew, hey, that's coming, then it's like, okay, I can set up and tear down if I know there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I'm saying? So here's the second thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is find space that we can occupy 24-7, and that's like, praise Jesus, right? Yeah, 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 you can clap for that, yeah. So part of the conversation was this, like if we're going to bring resources to this thing, if we're going to figure this out, um, we're going to be one church, then the beauty of that is we do currently have some resources in Joplin that now we're going, hey, if we're one church in two locations, we want to help. Northwest Arkansas get to where they need to be so that we're not setting up and tearing down every week. So as early as this week, and I'm just telling you already, God's moving in this, but as early as this week, there are locations that have popped up and popped on the radar that we're now talking about and going to be talking to in order to lease. Now, I can't tell you that that's, that's not going to take a little bit of time to lock a place down, but our prayer right now, if I can just be honest, if, you know, there's a scripture, I'm lying right now, there's a scripture that says, you know, uh, blessed are the flexible, they won't get bent out of shape. That's not a scripture, but that's something that I think is really important, okay? Uh, so so if, you, if you guys who are, are already very flexible, if you guys will be patient, here's my prayer. Now, whether God's timing is my timing, I, I, he has not told me that, but my prayer is that we could potentially wrap up potentially in November, December, maybe by the beginning of the year, have a space that we could get into 24 seven, where we could, we could even meet during the week if we wanted with some of the, the studies and stuff from crucible that's happening. Some of you guys have been in those groups. Uh, when we've got, you know, we we're talking to Andrew, we're like, you know how hard it is to, to do band practice in his living room. <laughs> you know, I can, yeah, yeah. You know, how awesome would it be to have a space to be able to actually for the worship band to actually, you know, walk through and, and be able to do some of those things. And so, so we're praying through that. That, those are two things that we need you all to pray significantly for right now. One is this, uh, Joplin, you guys know first, our leadership up there obviously knows and has made this decision, but we're not telling Joplin about this change of being one church in two locations till next Sunday. So if you know people in Joplin, you know, we'll find out if the secret got out. But if you know people in Joplin, um, you'll be able to celebrate with them next week. But next Sunday, I'm standing on the stage there, and I, I'm going to say this. Hey, as you guys know, we planted and, 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 and supported a church in Northwest Arkansas, Hope City down there, uh, almost four years ago. It'll be four years in February, right? I, some of you, are, you know very well. Yeah, we've been here for, but lost three years. Well, yeah, that's right. Adam actually been here for it'll be three years in February. Thank you. So, uh, so I'll I'll share this Sunday and say, 
in doing that, what we learned is that we are able to resource better and we think grow the kingdom and reach lost people quicker if we link arms tighter than we have been. And I'm gonna share that with them. So our first gathering up there, um, I'll, I'll be talking to you and to them. Uh, and, and that, now, now not this next week, but the following week, right? And so you'll hear me up there. I'll talk about our Hope City family in Arkansas and our folks up there are going to know like we're one church. Like this isn't two separate churches kind of trying to figure out how to reach people, but this is one church going after it, right? And that's gonna bring a lot of relief down here for leadership. It's gonna bring a lot of relief in, in that specific area. Also, we have established elders up there and we're gonna work with the guys here who have been designated at this point. They were on the management team to lead this church to go, man, how do we continue to support and lead this? So those two things, we're gonna be one church in two locations and we're gonna, we're gonna immediately, and we already have, this week started looking for space that we could occupy 24 7 with a, either a purchase or a long-term lease is, is, is the way we're approaching that so having said that this is what I want to do because we're gonna pray together here in a few moments but I'm gonna ask this because our, our, our native children are gonna start getting restless and they're gonna rebel here in a moment and and it's gonna be nasty so when they do that so so here's what I'm gonna ask any question goes we're not gonna have time to answer them all, but any question goes, if you have a question that you think could apply to the group, um, uh, then throw it out. I'll do my best to answer it. Yeah. So, am I understanding that it's gonna be, it'll be like Northwest Arkansas footprint, not a playbook, that we do things exactly as Joplin, they do as fitting for Northwest Arkansas? Yeah, so Letitia asked, so just to clarify, are we gonna do things exactly in Northwest Arkansas, like, like a playbook, like we do in Joplin? And the answer would be this. So there are some things that we will, over the, over the next few weeks, and honestly, few months, we'll be talking through that. There are gonna be some things that we're gonna line up really closely on, and there's gonna be some, some other things that are gonna be really loosely lined up. For instance, it doesn't make sense for us in Joplin and you guys here to, uh, you know, for, for us in Arkansas to have a similar local outreach as our church in Joplin, that's silly, right? Because there's needs here specific to the community. So our local impact here and the things that we do, those organizations we've been investing in here, they're gonna be unique to Arkansas. Uh, ours in Joplin are gonna be unique to Joplin. And so some of the, the big picture stuff, we're gonna line some more stuff up to help in things like Kids World. We're gonna continue to line some stuff up to help on Sunday mornings. But Andrew, uh, man, we're, we're, we're hoping to be able to re resource him even more as he leads worship down here. That's why Shane's here. Shane wants to make sure that we're doing everything we can to, to help support this and make sure that we have what we need down here from that standpoint. Um, Man, I, I'll be honest with you, like, uh, I'm excited. I'm super excited about this because I think our church in, in, in Joplin is going to see our church here as part of the same part of the same crew, not two separate churches going, hey, we kind of like each other. You know, it's like, man, we do, but we need to make sure that we're doing this together. That's a great question. Other questions? Yes. Yeah, it'll look somewhat similar to what we're doing now. The preaching, we're, we're working on that right now. To We're going to have a, a big dog uh, screen slash, I don't know. We're looking at like, this is awesome. Kevin, did you buy this this morning? This is awesome. Walmart? Walmart, okay. So this is awesome. Uh, but for the preaching portion, we're looking at, you know, everything from... I mean, we talked about a 100-inch TV. We weren't sure if that existed. Um, but if it does, we're like, that would be sweet. And so we're looking at a very big screen with really high quality for the preaching portion so that um, you guys feel like um, you, know, you feel like that's great. Now, one of the things we want to do in, in contextualizing what's going on down here, because we're a smaller church here, we want to leverage that. Like, we want to lean into that. So... You know, that, that, may mean, that may mean some stuff on Sunday morning looks different, but I would just tell you this, we're changing things in Joplin all the time too. Like we need to continue to change things to go, hey, what are the needs right now? And so when you guys move from the theater out to here, huge win. I was here and I sat in those seats in there. And at first when you sat in them, you're like, man, these are comfy. 
And then you realize you, ha you can't see anybody else in the theater. You can see some legs, you know, that was about it. And, and to be out here and to be able to see each other and everybody, this is who you guys are. You know what I'm saying? So you making that change, huge, huge. And so it, it really creates more uh, community. Y'all, I, I, I would love at some point for you guys, if you're up in Joplin, to sneak in there. Here's what's awesome, is like the relational equity that you guys have, even in a large church like us, it exists. And so I think we can maintain that as we grow and as we move forward to go, man, we want to be about relationships. I'm convinced of this. People don't want to be a part of a church where they're not seen or known. I just don't think they do. Um, and they, if they do, they'll go in for like six months and then they'll leave. Why? Because what, what's the point? You know, you, you, can, you, can, you can connect with people in a lot of different places. People want to go to church because they want to be in relationships. They want to be doing life together. They want to be encouraging each other and blessing each other. So um, great question. So that's, it's a little bit of an answer, at least in the immediate uh, we're going to keep things pretty similar um, because what you guys do down here looks pretty similar to what we're doing in Joplin. But what you guys don't know is we've actually stolen some stuff that you guys have done. <laughs> there, there's, there's a few things you guys have done, and Adam and I were talking about this, and I'm like, ooh, I think, I think we should do that in Joplin. And so that's the beautiful part of being one church is to go, man, how can we uh, encourage each other and share each other and bless uh, each congregation in that? So other questions? Yes. Yep. Yep. What are you thinking? Yeah. You're, you're not excited about that. No. Yeah. Tell me why. I want my minister to yeah. be there so I can walk up to him and say, I'm having this issue yeah. right now. So I think the difference is we would, and this is, I mean, I, I'm not faulting you for that, but I think the difference is we're, we're, uh, we're equating the pastor that's preaching as the one who's going to pastor everybody. And that's, can I just share this right now? That is part of what will keep, keep us from being healthy as a church and growing. Because if there's one person and it's the guy who's preaching every week, that's responsible to pastor even this size church, that's why we have a guy right now who's tapped. And so I'm not saying that's wrong because I grew up in that and that made total sense. But what we've got to do is we have to shift from thinking that, because the word of God doesn't change. You know, the, the word of God is unchanging. The method and the way it deliver, it's delivered changes. The word of God doesn't change. So if we're preaching the Bible, which is what God's called us to do, and we're called to that, that's not going to change from week to week to week. We're still going to have a pastor here that's leading people and encouraging people on a day-to-day -day basis. If this helps, um, this has been one of the hardest things for me to navigate in Joplin as the preaching pastor, is I had to give some of that up as the church grew. In fact, now I have had to give, give a lot of it up. And here's why, because I can't effectively, personally, and I don't think it's healthy, pastor all the people in Joplin. And in fact, where I really started feeling that is when we started hitting 300 people. And then I was like, well, now not only do I not know everybody, but I, I literally can't sit in living rooms with everybody. I can't go to coffee with everybody. And so what we did is we grew the staff, and that's why these guys are here. We've got other staff, other pastors on staff in Joplin. We have plenty of people who are pastoring folks. But if we think that the only person that can pastor the church is the person who preaches, then I, th I think we're gonna actually hurt and, and stifle growth. This is one of the big shifts we're making, is I love Adam. But as this thing's growing and as, as we're moving this thing forward, this isn't Adam's church. And he will tell you, this is God's church. And if you're called to God's church, then there's a lot of different people who can do a lot of different things in this setting. And we need the oversight of pastoring. I, I would argue this because I feel the same tension that, that you're talking about. Like that, that's, I, I feel that tension. But I have been in it. I've been in that setting. And I, I, th I think it's surprising. I think it's surprising how much God can do and move and work. Now, if you can't, if you are of the mind that like, hey, the only person that can pastor the folks is the person preaching, then yeah, this isn't probably going to be, this, this isn't going to be exciting for you. So, yeah. We all love Adam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We all love Adam. That's not a question. Right. Why not stay home and watch church on TV? Well, you can. The problem is there's no relationships in that. So here's what I would tell you. The, the, the relational aspect of the church is this right here. 
This, 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 so I, I mean, y'all, we experienced this in COVID. I, I, I preached to a camera. You guys, some of you that were involved in church, then you watched church online, right? And it, you know what was horrible about it? You may be getting the Bible, but you weren't in relationship with anybody. I was, I mean, I missed my church family. I, I remember standing in the back of the room crying week 10 because I missed the people that were in our lives. And I remember preaching to empty chairs going, man, this is brutal. This is horrible. So uh, this, this, what we have going in the relationships that we're building here, this is the way the church works. And, and just to, just to, you know, not to over, over, overdo this, but when you think about the church in Acts, these guys, they, 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 there were people, local leaders that were pastoring folks, and then there were guys like Paul and evangelists that were going around to the different churches, sharing the word, handing off the word. There were multiple people that were teaching the words of Jesus, but then they had community and local leaders that were making sure that played out in their community. So I'm, I'm not dismissing your tension at all. I hope you hear that. Like I, but I do think there is a, I do think there is a way and a shift of thinking. That's why when we talk about there's a shift of thinking in this that I would encourage, I would encourage you, and we can talk afterwards too, but I would encourage you to hang, hang and check it out. And then if you're like, man, this just isn't me. Like I totally understandable, totally get it. But part of my responsibility now as a communicator in Joplin going, hey, because it's not just me that preaches up there, is going, hey, we, we have a church here that we have to be connected to. Right? And I feel that. So I feel that weight as well. And I just want you to know that. So, Beth. Okay. Um, so, will we, you said something earlier, but um, will, you always, will we always be watching a train or will there be times that someone is here? Yeah. And they'll alternate that? Yeah. We, Adam, I mean, we do love you, buddy. <laughs> we love you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. I would say kind of yes to any and all of that. So um, when when I say the Hope City way, um, this is the way Hope City not only in Arkansas does it, but in Joplin, we do what works. And what we think is um, this is going to relieve some, but there's still going to be some some live preaching here as well. And it's not just going to be. Here's what, here's a, here's a tension that I feel that I'm really passionate about, and this will speak to that, but it'll also speak to something that, that you were concerned about. If, if I were you, this is what I would do. Okay, there's a, a large church in Joplin and a small church here. Does that mean that's the varsity church and this is the JV church? Here's what I would tell you. I believe it would be completely unbiblical if we do that. If we have an image that a church is important based on the size of the church, we have completely missed the book of Acts. <laughs> we have completely missed what God teaches and how the kingdom of God works because it's just not the way it's not. So when we sat around that table last week and we said, hey, how do we move this thing forward and how do we bring relief and how do we get into a facility and all these things? One of the things that was non-negotiable is that we are churches that are going to be valued and pastored and led and poured into and have vision and all this isn't a man we got a deal going on up there and we just want you guys to be a part of it that's just not the heart of it and and i want you to hear that from me and and we're we're working very very hard to jump through some of those um obstacles right now to make sure that that we're clear on that so we've got some we will have uh, different opportunities too. Like we've got some folks every once in a while in Joplin that may preach that could also preach down here. Uh, and so it, it really depends, Beth, on kind of the the dynamics and the season of all of that. And so I would say it's both and kind of all of that. It'll be a, a little, but it, initially we're going to do uh, the, the video preaching from the standpoint of bringing some relief to that specifically for leadership here. Were you going to say something else? Yeah. 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 Well, um, just so you know, I I feel all of that, and I know that may not be. <laughs> you may be going, yeah, maybe you do, but I, I really do because if you knew the way I was wired, um, that's just what I believe about God's church. I don't think there's 
some churches that are more important than others. I think God, uh, his church is his church, you know. So I hope that's helpful by me being transparent. Eric. <clears throat> So if, yeah, Eric's, uh, he didn't volunteer this information, but if you want to pick his brain. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did look like I might have slipped you some money beforehand or something, so I appreciate you clarifying that. So. I just want to say, we came from a church in Indiana. We moved to... Here, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to repeat this, so I'm going to hold this up to okay. you. Okay. We had been at a smaller church and moved to a church in Indiana that was larger, actually the one you were at, and it was video feed, and we just weren't sure about it because that pastor wasn't in the building. But once we got used to it, after, what, five times, six times, it's like you felt like he was there, and you had your campus pastor there if you needed anything. But it was, and it took a load off the campus pastors. Yeah. But it was, it was good. You felt like they were in the room, and we got used to it, and it's not a big deal. Mm. It really became not a big deal at all. It was good. And I would encourage you, as we heard at a church in North Carolina, if you're not sure about coming if we do this, give it five, six times. At least try it. Because you may find you think differently once you have. Yeah. Yeah, and I want you to hear this too. Thanks, Letitia. I, I don't know why I didn't think about think that about you guys, but I'm like, you guys, you can pick these guys' brains too. They'll tell you the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I was in it. There's negatives that we think um, we're we, this again the Hope City way. I'm like, we think we can like address some of the negatives that I experienced when I was in that personally. Adam was in it. We, we've got a similar context, and we think we can address some of those and go, man, we think there's a better way than the way we experienced it. Because I think there's ways that it can, again, when we went back to the model of, you know, it kind of being cookie cutter, that's, that's really not what we're talking about as much as being one church in two locations. One of the things that the shared message does is it, it allows us to journey together as a church spiritually in a way that's going to end up allowing us to be at the same destination and, and growth as we do that. So ideally, I mean, there's, there's uniquenesses to every campus. Yes. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so we've actually heard a lot about the challenges of kids' stuff, and so I, I think we have to address that if we're gonna, I mean, we're, we got a lot of kids, you guys are looking around the room, um, we're the same way in Joplin, and so we don't, not just that, but space is a big issue. Like, we gotta figure out kids' space that, you know, we, we've had some, some families that's been tough, because it's like, oh yeah, there's, yeah, we're in a movie theater. We're not sure what all happens in this movie theater throughout the week. So I think that's a, a very, a very legitimate thing. I want you guys to hear this real quick, okay? Because I'm going to say this. I don't want it to sound harsh, but I want to make sure that we're functioning in reality, okay? Um, currently, where we're at, we cannot continue to do this. Financially, staff-wise, our pastor, we, we can't, like... I want to make sure I'm really clear. We cannot continue to function as a church doing what we're doing here. And maybe I should have started with that. Here's the problem uh, with me saying that is as I say that, I, I just don't believe that's God's plan. I mean, look around, y'all. This, like, God's got a plan for this church and this church family. And it's not to shut the doors and stop functioning. That's not the plan. You know, we, we are... Literally, and I want you to hear this too because I think this will help. Um, but we are literally, we're going through the budget process right now. Um, this, this church right here cannot afford to go lease space right now. Not what we need. We can't buy anything. We can't lease it. And that is not because of anything other than we're small. There's still a lot of newness. The undertaking financially that that would, that would require um, now, some of you, we need you financially to jump in if you haven't. And you're like, well, thanks for throwing that out there. I'm telling you, like, th th we're being as honest as possible. Like, if, you, if this is your church, we need you to help support this church financially. What we're saying that, we, that I didn't put up on the screen is, and, and that dollar amount we're still working through. But when, when I say we're going to get a space to lease, like, Joplin is covering that cost. Our people in Joplin who love you guys and care about you guys, we're in a different season. Here's my thing. Y'all, this church is going to grow, and we're going to see God do some cool stuff, and there's going to be another opportunity, and you guys are going to be able to invest in another opportunity like we're investing in you right now, and that's how the kingdom grows. And so this isn't because of anything other than this is new, and it's hard to start a congregation you guys are like, no joke, you know, like we feel that you all feel that. But we sat around the table and as we're going, hey, we're getting to the end of the year and we can't sustain this. Literally, the question is, do we shut the doors or do we believe God still has a plan and a vision and a purpose for this? And I'm telling you, we believe in the second and we believe this is how that can happen. If we keep doing things the way we're doing it now, Hope City's not going to be here. And, and, and I just don't, I don't believe, and you, can, and you can ask any of those leaders in the room, they're all looking around the room going, no, God's not done. Like, we're at a fork in the road, and we think what he has for us moving forward, we, we think it's going to be good. And I'm standing here telling you that, Andrew. Can you just, like, let us know what Adam Yeah, this is what we've communicated right now. We're like, uh, at, we're like hey, these guys need to rest. And when, uh, as Ashley recovers and they get rest, we're, we're chatting through that and, and making sure. But we, we, again, we're kind of a weekend. And so the message right now is breathe, just breathe, you know, do the best you can to breathe. And we're going to start infusing energy from, from Joplin and resources from Joplin to make sure that, that we shift gears and do this. So. Now, the goal of the church here is still, we, financially still, we want to be self-sustaining eventually, but the, the course we're going, we weren't going to be financially self-sustaining quick enough to be able to, to keep it happening. So somebody else raised their hand over again. Yeah, I mean, the, the worship team is very similar. We, we've just started having uh, conversations. We met with um, some of the team on Monday, and some of those plans are, and how, do, you know, We've talked about as, as much as, man, it'd be cool to periodically do a worship night, especially if we had space 24-7 where we could pour into some of that. How can we also steal some of you guys when we do some, some collaborative 
training and those things to be able to just make us all better. And so, uh, again, a week in, I think we've got ideas and we're excited about some of that, but how do we keep raising up folks, certainly in Arkansas for the, 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 the location here, so. Like on a Sunday? Yeah. Is it just gonna be the same? For, for now, for now we're gonna continue to do worship some of this isn't going to, some of this is going to look zero. I mean, actually, I don't think anything's going to look different next week. And then the following week, um, you know, I'll, when, I, when I teach, I'll actually be talking to you guys. And if you're like, well, man, he's talking from a, uh, a camera to us, then I get it. That's a, that's a shift. That's a change. And, um, and I understand that, that it's going to take a little bit of time to shift to that. Some of you guys who are used to it, I appreciate you speaking up. But for those of you who aren't used to it, um, I, I get it. Like, I totally do. I understand that's going to be a shift and a change for you guys. So. I just want to take a word of encouragement. So, mm. during COVID, a lot of us watched, you know, service online. And I will tell you, I was super blessed by the church that I was watching. The missing piece was family. Okay? So, we need to remember that. And we also need to remember, in our practical lives, like when you, at your job, when you work with us, when you have your hours in there, your family, when you're all in there, there's just no room, there's no rest, you're walking to Thank you. I, I would just double back. Yeah, thank you. That was a great word. I would just double back and say, um, wouldn't it be nice to spend time with each other instead of setting, and ter- setting up and tearing down stuff? <laughs> yeah, I was like, praise Jesus, you know. But, but that's the part where, and not only that, but that's the, that's the beauty and the bread and butter of Hope City is y'all love each other and there's a community feel here. When you walk in, it feels like you're part of family. It really does. And so that's what we want to continue to pour energy into and free you guys up to do as well. So maybe I know we're running out of time, aren't we? Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, plenty of time. Uh, that's the other thing is like yeah. our timeline. Man, here. yeah, it's it tough. Crunched, tough. So yeah, I would. It'd be awesome. Well, here, here's what I would say. That that's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. We're um, y- yes and yes. So it's like we're we're really praying right now. Like God, we need you to to lead us to something. One of the areas that we've been looking at because of price that we think we can afford is the Lowell area. And so, but I don't know that that's where we'll land. And so some of you who are like, oh, that's gonna be a farther drive, don't get caught up on that because I don't know that that's where we're gonna land. We're just looking at that going, hey, price-wise, what can we get into? We're looking at a bunch of different types of buildings. Um, we're, we're looking for a place that's gonna allow us to rent something that we can set up camp in and call home. You know, so, um, we got, we got a lot of different people working on it. Some folks, uh, even in, in Joplin, who are working with some of our folks down here that are commercial folks that are, are calling contacts and, and beating the bushes for that stuff. So, great question. And, and as we, as we uh, progress in this, especially over the next several weeks, um, I'll, I'll be certain to make sure and update you guys on that. Adam will update you. Like, we'll have plenty of communication as we, as we work towards that. It's, we're going to have to be a little patient, uh, but you guys have been so patient already. Like, I think, I think if we've got a little bit left in the tank, I know we don't have a, a ton, but if we've got a little bit left in the tank, it'll be good. So here's what I want to do. Um, we're going to, we're out here in a moment, we're going to close um, by, we're actually going to sing Good Plans, um, which I think is perfect for what we believe God has for us. And then I'm going to, I'm going to hang out for a little bit. Uh, here's my email. If you want my email, um, it's the best way to holler at me. Um, if you want to um, it, send all your complaints to somebody else, but if you want to holler at me, and uh, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, but if you have questions and you're like, man, um, curious about this or this, feel free to, to shoot me an email. It's literally just Cody, C-O-D-Y, at experiencehope.city. In fact, that's all our staff emails. So Adams is Adam, 
at experiencehope.city. Uh, Logan, Shane, theirs are the same way. So it's just our first name at experiencehope.city. And if you're like, hey, I'd like to have a phone call or I'd like to, can you do coffee? I'll, I'll do whatever I can to make that happen so we can sit and chat through some of that stuff. And if, if that's helpful for you, um, I'll, I'll try to do any of that. So it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, to close us, we're going to pray, and there is communion at, at the tables here if you want to take communion. But this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to ask you to do, okay? Um, we're going to pray together. We're going to sing um, good plans. And then we may have to migrate out a little bit to the sidewalks or whatever, but uh, I'll be hanging around. Adam will be hanging around. Uh, Barrett, one of our elders, is back here. Uh, I see Scott, Kevin, Jason. Jason's up here. Uh, so Shane's back here. If you want to talk to any of our staff or any of the folks who um, are, are working through this and making this possible. Let me, uh, I'm going to ask us to do something different, all right? I'm going to ask us to um, stand up and, and we're just going to get into a, the weirdest, ugliest shaped circle that we can get to pray uh, before we sing, okay? If you can make a big circle around the chairs, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how you're doing that. And then after we pray, um, if you would like, during, while we're worshiping, if you'd like to take communion, uh, feel free to do that, okay? Let me pray for us. Uh, Father, you're good and... We trust what you have for us. But we, we believe that you have called us to reach those in need of hope in Northwest Arkansas. Father, we believe that you have called us to something much greater than ourselves. And so I just pray right now, even as we're asking you to, to bless this church and move forward, God, that you would continue to reveal the plans that you have for us. We don't have all the answers. We don't pretend to, Lord, but we believe there are a few pieces here that you're leading us in that we can be confident of. And so, God, as we do that, would you just go before us? Would you provide a space, provide a building that we can call home? God, would you continue to allow ministry to happen here in a absolutely powerful way? God, we, we want to see you move among us, among our friends. We want to see you bring hope to the hurting. We want to see those who thought they were so far away from you find that you love them dearly. That's our prayer. And so we worship you. We sing this, Father, as a, a prayer this morning. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.